we're here to talk about gun bills and what's on the table in Springfield, Catfish Bill, just to kind of clear the air. Absolutely. To uh, um, educate the people, because I got guys going, uh, well, I hear, hear we can't do this or this or this, and we want to kind of clear it up, and there's so much. There's so much stuff. It's uh, you know, it's a knee-jerk reaction. I realize that, and they're just throwing as much as they can at the wall to see what sticks. Some of it, you know, I'll concede, but some of it just not. So, sure, sure. Uh, go ahead and start where you want. Well, thanks for having me. First off, I always appreciate coming. It's always a, a good time and have good conversation. And I think that's kind of the point you're saying that we need to be having a conversation, yes. not a not a one one statement and be done with it so i appreciate that but let's let's just talk since we're here okay and we're close um to the rock river let's let's get the catfish bill out of the way okay Uh, so i'll just give you a a real quick history so i spoke with some constituents had some concerns uh since the uh accidental fish kill nine years ago yeah yeah well the dnr as they should do uh surveying of our waterways and all waterways, and they want to make sure that the aquatic life is good and the habitat is good, and um, unbeknownst to me, uh, they were doing uh, additional on the Rock River because of the um, the accidental kill. Yes, yes. So uh, I had some constituents concerned, and I re- reached out to DNR before I filed the bill saying, you know, is, is this okay? Are you going to, you know, go with me on this? Is there enough information to back it up? They did not get back to me prior to the filing deadline, so yes. I had to file the bill. Okay. Um, they come back to me afterwards and say we don't have to we don't have to pass legislation to do this. We do it by rules. And I said, great. Anywhere that I don't have to promote writing another law yes, yes. and restriction on folks is the best thing. Yeah. So uh, they stated that um, they did not see the need. Um, it had bounced back for the limit. Um, on the on the catfish, however, that they could see on the size of of the other. Yeah, the slot. They call it the. The slot, slot was. Thing. They had no issue on the slot. It was about the thirty five. Okay. Okay. Um, so they said they're doing another survey in June. It was already planned and on the books. And would we be willing to you know wait to put any any restrictions or anything on? To push okay. that through rules. I said, absolutely, let's have the facts before we yeah, change yeah. anything. <laughs> Unfortunately, many people don't do that. You know, it's just, well, it's yeah, com- yeah. I, there's no reason to fight with a DNR or constituents no, if we no. can all come together with an agreed. Because I think anybody that fishes on the Rock River or any, any waterway, for that matter, wants to do what's best for the aquatic life. So yeah. they have their grandchildren and, and generations to come fishing. Yeah. So uh, we're going to wait until the survey. I, I have hopes... Um, that there will not be any issues and that the DNR won't have to put any restrictions. But my bill is dead. Okay. Um, it is going to sit in rules. If it is accidentally called, um, I will go ahead and have them just put it oh. back. Okay. So there is no change. Just writing a bill does not make a law. Um, yeah, that's what, see, that's what a lot of people don't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, it's instantly law, and it's not. No, it's not. And that's another reason there's really no reason to even if we wanted to push DNR and, and go this new process, it wouldn't, be in, it wouldn't be in effect until April of 2019. So yeah. there's no reason not to wait for the survey and the facts. Okay. Um, and I spoke with uh, um, the DNR themselves as well as uh, a local commercial firm helps the biologists do studies, yeah. and he agrees with our analysis to wait and that there is no concern with the count, but, you know, you want to watch this up. Yeah, okay. So as it stands right now, fish on. Yeah, fish on. Yeah. Fish on. Okay. And I, anticip- I anticipate it to continue that way. Yeah, okay. Dave Greth and you guys out there, fish on. Fish on. And I know there was, and you know, and there was guys that worry, worried about it, and they, you know, you hear rumors, sure. but they're going to shut the catfishing off. Uh, no. No. You know how how it goes, you know, and, and I'm one of those guys that I I get on the computer and I try to read through the legalese of these bills, sure. you know, and I was like, I'm not seeing it, but everybody was coming to me and going, well, what's the deal? Are we going to be able to fish? Well, yeah, it, it was in a magazine, and even on the bottom of the disclaimer, it said this seems like a, a logical bill if they have the facts to back it up. If there was a need for if it. If there's yeah. a need, and yeah. that's, the, that's the important thing. Yeah, but. like we were talking earlier. 
I've sturgeon fished out in Washington, and they have the slot limit, 40, 42 to 48 is what you keep. Anything below that is breeding stock, and anything above that is grandfathered, you know, and I was surprised <laughs> there's fish bigger than 48 inches in this <laughs> that I'm fishing for, you know. Sure. But sometimes you have to do that to control populations, sure. you know, so so it's not a bad thing, so... You know, everybody fish on. And, and it's been a great process to learn. Uh, but I had, it's funny, I had two bills out of all of them that I filed. Two folks, two different agencies did not get back to me in time, and both of those have been concerns. So it's just, it's a very, very busy time when we file. Yeah. And yeah. they just cannot respond as quickly as we hope, so. Yeah, I mean, I I don't envy you at all in your job down there. And everybody says, oh, I'd like to go down there. I could, No. It's, it's I, like I say, I, I read through some of these gun bills we're going to talk about, and I don't think lawyers could read them. Oh, it's tough. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's you know, tough. And when you have four or five of those come up in a day, you know, to read it all and get get the everything without the bullet point, you know. Sure. You don't have bullet points. Or 33. On. 33 yeah. gun bills were read. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I sat there last night, and I didn't get the headache just because yeah. it was just... I was like, who writes this as per, but exempt from, you know. Shall, may. Shall, may. You know, and, and there's and there's one word I want to discuss in uh, the one bill, um, which, you know, I understand with uh, the shooting and stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and everybody's worried about the kids. Okay, I'm not, you know, even conceding that. It just... You, you write a write something, okay, it gets passed, and then there's one word in there that can change the whole meaning. And the one I um, really bothered with, that's in, I got to put my glasses on so I can read. No, no problem. Yeah. No problem. But uh, 1465, I believe it is, okay. is the one about um, under, eight, under 21. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the, the wording that really gets me, by prohibiting prohibiting them from possessing or purchasing. Okay, I understand the purchasing. Um, my 13-year-old granddaughter, I put her in, in a deer stand, and I'm 100 yards away. We're deer hunting. She is now in possession of that gun. See, you know, and it's, it, I guess it would depend on the law officer. You know, she's in possession of that gun. And is that gun a you know, just that one word in there. It, it is. It's a violation. Yeah. But here, here's the thing: a lot of people are, are not understanding. You know, because the way the, the the it is presented is that it prohibits assault weapons for persons yes. under 21. This bill changes the definition of an assault, assault. bill. Yes. Or weapon. So it includes um, semi-automatic. Rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Yes. Because, which is all guns, yeah. basically. Yeah. So, an assault weapon is not going to be in the hands of even probably you or me. We're not, we're yeah. not we're not licensed to have a, a registered. Yeah. Uh, this an assault weapon is full auto select fire, being able to attach a bayonet, and I'm not going to pay the five hundred dollars a year for the the NFA license just so I can have a, a fully automatic weapon. And that's where the wording gets so tricky because we talked before. I've got a 715, Mossberg 715. It's a 22 caliber rifle. Because the wording they talk about for an assault weapon is it has a shroud around the barrel and a telescoping stock and a detachable magazine. Okay, this is a, it looks like an, AR, which is not assault rifle, um, has a shroud around the barrel and a telescoping stock. It's an it's a twenty two caliber. Mm-hmm. It's it's a plinker. My granddaughters love it, mm-hmm. but under some of these wordings, you know, it's it's uh, and you've got to you've got to dig deep into these amendments. Well, and that's the thing. This is this is a problem, and I spoke on the floor about one of the other bills. But this is this is the issue, 
is these bills are, uh, some of these are drafted very, very quickly. Very quickly, yes. Um, you can automatically see a problem when there's a bill that has eight or nine amendments within a, a few days. Yeah. That, you know, there's, that's a problem. Um, I am 110% for, um, you know, having smart uh, gun and crime bills. Um, but when you are being reactionary and you're going on a motion, um, that sometimes passes things that ha have the unintended consequence. So these yes. folks that wrote this, was it their intent to throw yeah. in every semi-automatic, um, which every gun? So yeah, th I don't think that's the intent. The intent I want to believe is that they are wanting to promote. Uh, safer society for our, yeah. our kids and our schools and all around. But when you put the word possess, when you change the definition. That's what we got to watch. And I'm just afraid everybody is knee jerking, so react, you know, quickly, just, you know, out of. You know what went on down there in Florida. Florida did the same thing, which is which is normal. I yeah, mean, we all yeah. do it in our lives on all different things. It doesn't have to be this particular issue. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, but just we need to step back, take a breath, and go, okay, that's, you know, because I, I understand there's a lot of um, 50 caliber rifles. How many school shootings have occurred with a, a long range sniper rifle? You right, know, that's and aren't a, they that's about. A, that's, that's a, a aren't they like $8,000? Yeah, too? they're, they're I mean, really expensive, and no, you know, nobody's going to use them in a school shooting unless you're two miles away, you know, shooting. And it, so uh, I noticed a lot of that, you know, that 50 caliber rifle. That's not even an issue. Well, and here's the thing, and anybody can use any sort of weapon. weapon. Yeah. Um, yeah. This it, this particular, you know, I, you know, for for the, the my gun that I have a 380 with only six in my magazine, yeah. Yeah. I can very quickly have well, I could have my pockets loaded yes with several different magazines and drop that within two seconds and have before anybody even blinks yeah. an eye. Well, um, and that's another issue that's coming up. Yeah, the the high caliber or not high caliber high capacity magazines. Um, well. They got 90 days to dispose of them, even like the weapons for the under 21. They got 90 days to dispose of them. Okay. Um, like the princess. Obviously, none of her guns are in her name. Sure. They're in mine. Sure. You know, so, but I guess the, the worst thing about this under 21 that, you know, just from the possessing, okay, like Gabe Olinger has the trap shooting team over there in Provincetown. Every one of those kids is standing there at the line with a gun in his hand. Is that is he in possession of that gun? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, they are. And that's just, you know, the, the idea that, a, I guess the bottom line, the idea that an 18-year-old kid can get drafted, go over, protect our freedoms, shoot an M4, shoot a minigun, shoot a fifty caliber, come home and he can't buy a shotgun to go squirrel hunting or rabbit hunt. Or even possess it. Or even possess it. That's in, it's just... Yeah. And that's that's the part that, it, you know, and there was a, a representative Costello spoke on the floor um, as somebody who was uh, a police officer and also he's a veteran. And he, he spoke about, you know, can you, can you change this? Can you revise this? And there was no give and take. And, um, you know, that would have, you know, been easier for some to, to swallow. Yeah. Um, just the combination of the whether and it's not even military. If you were a, in police training, yeah, yeah. Um, and you came home, um, so and then they're going to lose their job. Then yes, they're going to be obviously they're going to be discharged from their service. Yeah. Um, and the assault definition is so far from assault weapons. Yeah. I mean, so far from it. Yeah. It uh, just. I mean, I guess my thought, and not to get political, no, no. but if you're going to go so far as to you want to outlaw guns, yeah. then write the bill to outlaw all guns. If you if you have yeah. the guts to do it, yeah. if, you're, oh, if yeah. that's what you want, have the guts to do it. Yeah, but you can't <laughs> pick and choose. And if they are going to pick and choose, they need somebody um, with the intelligence to sit down and go, okay, this is a squirrel rifle. This is, you know have definitions and and i just of course you know my second amendment views i you know give an inch take a mile but okay worst case scenario 
Okay, now several of these bills are on Rauner's desk. Actually, only one, and that's SB 1657, and that's the gun dealer license. Licensing. Um, the yeah. other ones, the other three that were passed in the House, um, are going to the Senate, and the rumor is they will be voted on tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and you can listen live um, on, on the Senate. I anticipate... Neil, um, Neil's going to... Yeah. He's a no on all yeah. of them. Um, and I spoke with him um, last night about it, and... Uh, I assume they will all be on the governor's desk, because I assume they will all pass. Okay. Now, there's, what, 116 members in each house? 118 in the house. All right. Worst case scenario, again, you know, and this is my hum humble opinion, but uh, we've just seen that breaking news that uh, they don't think Rauner is going to pass. He's going to veto. Uh, what was that? The, the gun dealer licensing, 1657. Yeah. That, yeah. that bill's a nightmare. Oh, That's, yeah, I read it. It's, it has nothing to do, you know, the intent is to um, penalize uh, the corrupt dealers and hold them more accountable. But I'm, how are you going to hold them more accountable by charging them an additional fee? $1,000 or whatever it was, yeah. It was, you know, before I was getting here, I was looking at the bill and uh, part of the, um, the report that came out of Chicago, I believe it was 7,000 guns have been um, taken out of Chicago. And there's ten, uh, the top ten places they're getting them. Three of them were from Indiana. Two of them were from the suburbs. Okay. And they named them by name and yeah. their location of city. Uh, get rid of them. Yeah. Adding yeah. an additional license is not going to make them less corrupt. Yeah. And if they're in Indiana, they're not under our law. That's right. You know? That's right. And, uh, yeah, it just, and, and when there's great gun dealers around like Exner's up in Morrison. And he, he finally just he said, I've had enough. You know, that was last year when he closed down the store. He said, I've just had enough. You know, they changed one thing. And the way, like you said, it's a nightmare because they're wanting different types of guns to have different... Was, well, and yeah. they want they want video surveillance and maybe some, you know, the, the folks that have a small pole shed out in the middle of, yeah. you know, nowhere and, you know... Um, I'm sure that there is security, um, but they're going to mandate them to have security, mandate to keep the tapes for 90 days. Well, okay, so now that's the law. So if you don't want to be caught purchasing a gun, yeah. hold it for 91 days and go commit your crime. Yeah. And then it's going to cost the state roughly, because of the inspectors it's going to need, $2.1 million. Yes. Just so is this where we want to spend our money, or do no. we want to spend it on mental health, counselors, social services? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was... We could we could talk about that all. Day. That that's a that's a no brainer bill yeah. for me. It yeah. is not about gun protection at yeah. all. So, Rauner vetoes. It goes back to the House and Senate. Mm -hmm. You've got to have three fifths, which would be seventy. Seventy. Mm -hmm. Seventy one. Seventy one. You got to have seventy one, and none of these bills that I'm seeing, uh, seventy nine, uh, passed. Uh, 1468 passed by 79, so there are enough votes there to override his veto. But it's got to be both House and Senate, right? Yeah, but I, I could see um, I could see 1657 failing. I think we could get yeah. enough votes to fail that. Now, let's say, for example, um, 1468, which is the 72-hour cooling-off period for assault purchases, okay. which are there again. Yeah. So he could do an amendatory. And he could he could change the word assault, yeah. and he could he could change that so it would be acceptable and not be completely vetoed, because you know really I mean in the scheme of things I mean there's pieces of that bill that are also terrible, um, but 72 hours I mean you're waiting 72 hours for a handgun um, if you're going to go purchase you know I I took a class over the last yeah. weekend I ordered it well in time to. To Again, meet the yeah. seventy-two hour, well, um, so he could amend he could amend that to make it more acceptable. Yeah, um, yeah. That that's a problem. All these bills are designed for law-abiding citizens. <laughs> that's not where the problems at. You right, know? right. You know, it just uh, and I understand why a lot of these uh, Democrats from up around Chicago they're all just <sighs> we got to do something. You know, you got the strictest gun laws now, right? And right. the highest per capita murder rate in the world. What's you don't see a problem? You know, they just don't see it. No, we need more gun laws. 
-hmm. Well, they don't understand that, you know, the dealers have the federal licensing. They don't understand that you and I who are buying them have uh, FOID cards. FOID cards. Um, And that that's, you know, very, you know, regulated. But the other thing, too, with the 72-hour cooling is it also is going to ban sales of the assault weapons, let's which is all guns, basically, yeah. to non-residents. So what is that going to do to the little guy who has, you know, the the person who's been buying for years, built built a reputation of being a good dealer? Yes. Um, you know, typically, you know, my husband, when he buys, he doesn't buy in Iowa because he doesn't want to pay the transfer. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. But they're, they're, sometimes he does, so there's yeah, that case. Yeah. yeah. It, it, so it's not just... And that's another thing. The title doesn't necessarily say that's what the bill is. That's another problem. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. this is a 72 hour wait, but wait, I didn't know that you are banning sales from non residents to buy yes. any gun. Yeah. It, uh, that's what I say. It, uh, I went on here last night and just started looking, and I'm just uh, amazed by how they, it's just like they're trying to make it so confusing that you, you just use the 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 timeline of okay 72 hour waiting period okay do it mm-hmm. you know i agree with that whatever and then you find out there's all this stuff tacked onto the bottom mm-hmm. that and i think kind of think that's what they they kind of want you know they just you know they're they're overwhelming you guys oh sure sure well all of these bills um they didn't go to committee they, oh, they, they didn't. Oh, no. They were bypassed on third reading with the, when they were presented. Um, that's the political side. You know, so they okay. should have its time in committee to be debated in committee. Yes. And then be debated again on the floor. That was all. No. Yes. We were third read on the floor voting yeah. that day. Um, and there's, there's a lot on both sides of the aisle that have, even Republicans, that have no idea what some of this what this means means. and you know we have staff that of course on both sides of the aisle who can try to hurry up and analyze this but they're not given much time either yeah um so that's it's kind of like the budget we that was passed last year you know you as six months goes by there's still another thing that is going to take away from a social service or another organization yeah Yeah. um you just keep finding things and that's a problem well i uh i did a uh thing last year on the soda pop tax mm-hmm. out of Chicago. And I'm like, you know, fine. You know, I first saw it and I was like, that's fine. And then I got to reading and it's it basically in one of the paragraphs it was like that somebody just snuck it in that the state can tax you on anything. Any any income you have <coughs> if I have a yard sale and make fifty dollars, I have to claim that is and and provide and se- give, send sales tax to them. Uh, these uh, you know lockers that, that you put all your stuff in. All mm-hmm. these guys, they would have to start charging tax. So if you can imagine going to a yard sale and going, uh, that's five dollars, but let me figure it up here. It's five dollars and twenty five cents or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was just tucked into the bottom of that soda tax bill, you know. So everybody, okay, let's eliminate soda, you know, push more people off soda by doing a tax and but there was a lot more to it and that's what a lot of people you know the the guys that have been contacting me are like so what's going on with these gun bills and i'm like let's get tony in here and find out yeah you know sure, you know because sure. i can read it all night and i go i think that's what it means well that's even even the 1657 that he's going to be vetoing so those dealers pay a federal um now we're going to charge um up to two different um licensing fees for the actual dealer dealership corporation wife husband oh yeah and then your local home rule communities which is not most of us out here they can then put another local tax on it so it's it's not about gun safety it's about adding another level of regulation yeah uh if if you want to get rid of corrupt dealers shut them down yeah you know who they are simple you know who they are shut them down yeah and uh, you know, and, it, and it's oh, well, I can understand why well, Les Bear left the state, went over to Iowa. You know, unfortunately, there weren't a lot of jobs over to Iowa. You know, Dan Exner up there, he had four or five people working there at the store. You know, he's not the only one. Uh, Lewis left uh, Henry County and is in Eldridge, at eighty really? employees. Wow! And that just happened last year. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's 
you know, less saw the writing on hand, hand well, on and, the wall. You know, we've got Rock River and we've got Springfield. We've got, you know, right here, I mean, not far to go across the river. Yeah, you know. And that's, we don't want that. No, no. We want and, 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 I, and I don't think the people that are presenting these bills want that. Yeah. It's just they're, they're, they're reacting too quickly. Yes, yes. Uh, Instead of sitting back and going, okay, you know, and, I, and, and, I, and it's almost like they, they feel that if we enact this, that's going to stop school shootings. Right. And it's not. And it's not. No. You know, and even, you know, I I get, and I'm not not kidding, and I save them all because I'm like, I don't want anyone to ever question my ethics. I've received hundreds and hundreds, and still even yesterday, 50 50 more emails. Don't don't vote for any of these bills. Yes. Don't vote for any of them. Because, you know, for example, um, HB 1467, the bump stock ban. Yeah. I could get on to that. I mean, personally. Yeah. yeah. But I've got my district, you know, and that might bite me later. Yeah. Um, but I've got my district telling me no. Yeah. yeah. And whether I like it or I don't. Well, I think I mean, that that's the that's the feeling of give them an inch, and then they it's just a keep, slippery slope. Yeah, they keep whittling away. I myself, uh, I fired a bump stock. I fired full auto. Full auto, you can control. Bump stock, it's just bouncing all over. I, you know, and I don't really. You know, and here's the thing about being a responsible gun owner. I wouldn't shoot those things. No. You know, I trust who I'm with, whether it's you or my husband or my brother, whoever it is, saying, how powerful is that? Is it going to knock me back? Is it going to, you know, yeah. I'm not going to shoot. That's another thing about being a responsible gun owner. You, you know your limitations. You know your limitations. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I. I could care less on the on the bump stock thing, but I, I think there's I didn't even get to look at it. Um, there's probably stuff tacked to it, you know. Which there is, you know. That one's been that one's been because that was here before. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, one that has been ripped apart pretty well. And 1681, I think. Yeah. So no, that that no. one is. Yeah, and and I understand. You know, after the thing out in Vegas, you know, and. Down there, I don't think the kid had a bump stock down there in Florida, you know. But I think it's it's more of a let's give them that, right? You know, right. let's give them that. But then next time, what are we going to have to give? So I, you know, I I've got all kinds of friends that are equally divided, giving bump stocks because they they just don't they don't. But is that is that is that why, is that why somebody should vote yes for something like that? Yeah, yeah. is just to appease the mass masses and say, hey, I did this, you know, yay for me. Or is it better for me to do what I did and, and, and met with local, you know, in Carolyn Whiteside County, we, we did a meeting, had 16 members, and included uh, the state police, the county sheriffs, uh, local, um, some local police uh, administrators, teachers, principals, and have an open conversation about what's going on in the schools. Is there anything on a state level that you need from me? Yes. Um, those are the conversations we need to be happening, having before we bring these bills up. Yeah. And talk about great conversation and great ideas when nobody's attacking each other and they're just talking. Oh, I mean, it was a 60, it was going to be an hour, it was 90 <coughs> minutes, and really little conversation about guns. Finally, right. at the end, I had to raise my hand and say, the public's talking about whether or not you arm teachers. Yeah. So can we talk about that? Because people are talking about it. Yeah. There again, very open-ended conversation. Oh, well, that's good. That's that's what I wish a lot of this could be. Unfortunately, it uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. People, uh, I'll have a discussion with anybody about pros and cons, and if you want to have a discussion, you know, and if nothing else, you know, it's we also had a <coughs> six-panel. Um, task force, well, I would say task force, hearing in uh, elementary and secondary education committee last week. Six panels of folks came in. Um, When I looked at who was speaking, my first question to the chairman before we even started was, where's law enforcement and where's the state fire marshal? They were excluded from the conversation. However, the conversation went extremely well. There again, little talk about guns asking us not to pass reactionary bills, yeah. asked us not to mandate um, metal detectors. They want they don't want schools to be uh, a prison, or th- they want it to be a place of excitement and learning. And the bottom line is, today, still today, with the mass shootings, as horrible as this sounds, only 2 point, I hate to say that, 2.6 
percent of all de- children's juvenile deaths are happening in a school, in school, and majority of them are not, they're accidental, they're not shootings. Yeah. Uh, whether it be a kid falling off of apparatus in the playground, um, school is still the safest place for yeah. our children to be. And what this does is it's reminding teachers that have the locks on their doors to, you know, lock, keep the doors locked. Don't prop your door open with yeah. a brick. Don't put the, the little piece of cloth around your doorknob so the latch doesn't. Um, it has the state fire marshal talking about the barricades for if there's an emergency. It has them drilling. Um, more. It keeps people aware, which our schools, and, and we talk to small schools and suburban schools and Cook County schools, and a lot of them are doing what they need to do. So if you're in an inner city situation in, in Chicago, maybe it makes sense to have metal uh, a, a metal detector. Yeah. But yeah. does it make sense in Erie? No. no. And so let the, let the local schools figure out what is best and have them come forth. Yeah. And well, one of the, and a lot of things they can do yeah. don't require state laws. Yeah. So why would I get involved in that piece? Yeah, I've always said that, you know, local government deal with your issues in your area. Right. You know, and, and you know, and everybody's uh, talking about money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this company, I think it's right down in Muscatine, makes the things that slide over the locks. Mm-hmm. So the doors can't get open. Why, uh, you know, I don't know what they cost, but... Why can't we appropriate funds to just go, look, dude, we want, you know, 100,000 of them for our school, you know, however many it takes. You know, that's just, um, and, and go, I think that's here's the funding. Yeah. Do it because they, they have proven, you know, they can't get in the door. They just go on to the next one, you know. Well, and, and there's some state fire marshal issues with that. And I think they're meeting yeah. and they're talking. They also met last week. I haven't seen the report yet, but. Um, you know, then you have an issue of being barricaded inside with a, somebody inside the, yeah. the opposite. You know, so you might do this and have an unintended qu- consequence of somebody yeah. on the inside. Yeah. You know, you have to try to think of all things. And really, I think addressing all of these small bills and different pieces of every bill until we really pass a federal, you know, the federally is what I think it, it needs to come yeah. from. Yeah. Um, and we already have some of those things. But Illinois, I don't know how much more we can do. Um, to add a safety issue, you know, to, yeah. other than just getting rid of it. And that's, you know, that's one of the things about District 71 also I don't think a lot of people realize is whether you're a Republican or a Democrat here, you're sportsmen. Yeah. And people yeah. people are firm believers in, in the Second Amendment. And even the folks that come to me and say, you know what, I'm for the Second Amendment and I'm for not taking, you know, rights away. But dang it, why did you vote? Why did you vote against the bump stocks? Yeah. yeah. And I thank you for asking me rather than bashing me on social media yeah. or or wherever it happens to be your venue. Yeah. Thank you for asking me because now I can explain it to you why. Yeah. See, and that's, it goes back to just, yeah, you know, ask questions and don't try to shout out over, I, no. I, I hate that when you're trying to have a discussion. Um, you feel, say, a opposite polar of me, but you sit down and have a discussion. That's okay. Yeah. But not shouting out and stuff. And, and, and I kind of get the, the feeling that that's a lot of what goes on down there sometimes, or is it pretty civil down there? I mean, or... It depends. It depends. depends. You know, and when I spoke, you know, to Representative Willis, I said, you know, you're going to disagree with what I'm telling you, and that's okay. I know your intent is good, but you're you're putting a bill out that is not going to do what you want it to do. Yeah, 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 and I suppose in, in their own minds, doing a bill and going, you know, this is going to solve the problem. There's a lot of problems to solve. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, even let's, you know, not to bring up Florida and certainly not to bring up politics, but one of the one of the things we have to look at in, in Florida, for example, and I know they're doing it all over Illinois, and yeah. we've passed bills, you know, that to um, have administrators stop suspending and expelling students. Um, I voted on one to not expel a kindergartner. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, let's let's be smart within our, our means here. But 
these folks, some of these kids have misdemeanors or would be have assaults in their schools, and they're not being prosecuted because of new policies um, that was passed on by previous administrations to keep kids in school and to improve racial outcomes. And I'm I'm okay. I think that's good to be able to have a um, a conversation and talk. But you know what? If my kid assaults a teacher, or if my kid oh, yeah. told a teacher to go elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you best be getting them out of that school because when they get home, they're in yeah. trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's where, you you know, there is options. You don't just have to let kids walk all over you in your schools no. and let your teachers become the victims yeah. or the administrators become the victims. But let's talk about our alternative schools. You know, we have good alternative schools and we have bad alternative schools. I, I, I my, there was one incident years ago. Um, there was a, uh, I think about eight kids that went up in, in Savannah, and um, they couldn't find a, a teacher. They're, luckily, they found a, a, a PE teacher yeah. uh, who took on this group and, and did really well with them. And there's a great school down in East Moline. They didn't yes. have the funding, and they figured it out. Yes. And they've got somebody, and it's a great program. Maybe that's the option, and see if they can mainstream back into the into the school. Um, let's put some money into that. Let's let's make the kids accountable, and let's not let the teachers and the administrators be victims. Um, let's put money into our mental health. You know, I know mental health and um, kids not behaving, and you know the the social issues that we see in some of our bigger cities, especially. Um, you know, they're not they're not exciting and sexy to talk about. Yeah. The weapons are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's something that uh, you're passionate, whichever side you're on. Right. But you're, we, we either scared to death of them, or, and you know, we could go on and on we about. We could go on and on and on. Yeah. I mean, uh, take, you know, the, the the causes of the problems. Um, yeah. We that we could schedule a whole two hour show oh, about for that. sure. You know, for sure. And I've got people texting me here. Ask her this. Ask her this. You know. Well, and just to just so you know, I just want to say there's some people that have emailed me on my state email and asked me questions that have political reference, and I can't. Yeah. Just so you know, I can't yeah. answer those questions. Yeah. You need to put it in a way um, because when I'm in my state office and using state's resources, it's not whether it's not about me being a Republican or a Democrat. No. I no. cannot talk about those. I cannot talk no. about campaign um, contributions. I can't talk about political events. Um, so if you want to reach out to me. You know, get me your phone number, and I'll call. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, worst case scenario, um, Rauner passes him. We have to go back to override, or no, no, Rauner vetoes him. They have to go back to override him to make. He's got 60 days. He's obviously not going to do anything for midterms here. Um, he has to go back with three-fifths majority in both the Senate and the House, which is going to be a tough. There'll be no issue in the Senate. Yeah, yeah. They're super majority. Yeah. And, um, okay, so this all comes in a law. How do we go about changing it? You know, because i got a lot of, well, if this happens, you know, we're, you know, how these can we bills go here, in the scheme of things, these bills are minimal compared to what could pass when we go back in April. No, oh, now you're scaring me. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. There, there's a bill for um, HB 1664. Please feel free to go read that. Um, that is uh, enacts additional reporting and screening measures for FOID card eligibility. So. Um, my husband and I get into an argument. Oh, yeah. I know where you're going here. And I call anonymously to a hotline. Yes. And say, you know what? You feel threatened. I'm going to get him. He's a clear and present danger to himself and to me. I don't have to prove it. I don't have to say who I am. Yeah. And guess what? They're going to come and they're going to take his card and they're going to take all of his guns. No yes. due process. Yeah. That's 1464. That's got to be stopped. Now I have a police officer. Who's pulled me over? You felt threatened. I report him. He now loses his job. This thing is a nightmare. HB yeah. sixteen sixty four. This is going to do. This is going to. I, I, I can't even. It's going <laughs> to kick open a can of worms. It just. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, because you get into a, your neighbor and squawk about a fence or something, you know, your dog took a crap in his yard. He can call in anonymously and say, I know this guy's got guns. I feel threatened. And just out of the blue, you know, and, yeah, that's, that's, uh... uh I've got parents, oh. the hotline would be distributed to students, parents, um, they're going to have to figure out uh, financially how to, I mean, it's, they're going to have to make it very well known. They're going to have to spend money on funded yeah. mandate there. I mean, this, this I could go on and on on this bill. Um, and the Illinois State Police will receive no funding, most likely, from the state there again. So now we're, they're going to have to go increase manpower. Uh, so increase uh, salaries, pensions, benefits, and they're going to... Sure, that's what I really You know. imagine somebody coming up and you have even no idea who made the phone call. You made somebody mad today and they know oh, yeah. you're a gun owner. Yeah, oh yeah. And they just don't like that, that you're a gun owner. Yep. It's a nightmare. Yeah. And the other one that's uh, 1469, um, that is going to be the combination of the body armor and the, the magazine for the 10 rounds. Yeah. So it's going to be sold on the officer, God rest his soul, that was killed in Chicago most recently. Yeah, yeah. Okay? It's already the law that if you're wearing body armor and committing a crime, that's you, you, that's already law. Yeah. So now this bill will make it for everybody. Well, regardless, that guy who he was going to wear body armor, whether obviously, whether it's the law or yeah. not. You go into a situation like that wearing body armor and carrying a gun, you're committing a crime. But the bottom line is they're they're going to mask the ten rounds in this in, bill inside that, yeah. and then they're going to name it after the officer. Yeah. So well, that you know what I can't imagine that officer that officer's family would want that. Yeah. Um, because it's there again. It's a hidden thing, and it's talking about it. it went from um, and that's going to be another class. So how many people have ten rounds or above? And they're going to be automatically felons. Yeah. So all gun owners, dealers, and manufacturers will become felons if this is... Yeah. And that's for possession. Yeah. That's just, you got a couple 30-round mags laying there. Um, yeah. There's no exemptions or grandfather language for current or CCLs. Yeah. And suddenly you're a felon, they can come in and take all your guns then. This This will come April, the second week of April, these bills. We've got 1469... 1664, and then Willis is doing another one, uh, 772. Okay, what can these guys, the guys that are out there listening and all going, yeah, what can I do to help or let my voice be heard? Well, I think um, continue sending in your emails, uh, making your phone calls, calling you. You can certainly relay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and respectfully... Educate yes. people that don't understand. Don't attack people that think differently than us. No. Um, and just educate them. Give them things in black and white. Your word may not be enough. There's enough yeah. information, and you don't have to go to an NRA site. No. At no, all. No. Um, and you don't have to believe in their organization or Illinois Rifle or any organization for that matter. This information is very open. Open on So yeah. we, as folks that believe um, that these are bad laws. Um, so one, explain what they are there again respectfully. Yeah. Two, give them a, give them an idea of how give me an idea how we can change it. Yeah. You know, we have to we have to as a society quit complaining about what we don't like. Okay. We yeah. don't how do we fix it? Yeah. How do you, because I am not the expert by any means. I brought my expert in with us today, yeah. you know, just in case. He's just sitting over here, he's not saying a word. So, <laughs> so I mean, you have to you have to be around people. Don't take, um, and we all do it. Don't take social media as no. your source. Yeah. Um, even our local newspapers make mistakes now and then. You know, do no, if, if they do. They do. Yeah. Um, even you, Willie, behind yeah, the mic. Oh yeah. Yes, you know, I know. I've um, even them. me. Yeah. But own it. Yeah. And explain it.